Dow Industrial is up almost 300 points right now, up three quarters of a percent. The Nasdaq's up 117, two thirds of a percent. And the S&P is higher by 20. Uh, future soaring on the dovish Fed messaging yesterday and some upbeat earnings. Among them, Apple reported a double beat on earnings and revenue after the bell last night. However, overall sales were down 4 percent for the quarter and iPhone sales plunged 10 percent as business in China remains sluggish and competition is spiking in China from Huawei. Apple, however, also announced the largest share buyback program of all, $110 billion buyback. The stock is up on that this morning, and it is up six and a quarter percent. It's on track to boost the Dow Industrials at the open. Of course, Apple is a Dow component. Joining me now is Making Money with Charles Payne. Uh, he is the host and the author of Unbreakable Investor. Charles Payne here. Charles, great to see you. What's your reaction to the Apple quarter? Golly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's my reaction. I mean, yeah. the street was looking for maybe a $90 billion buyback announcement. I thought they would have to talk more about AI. Obviously, Tim Cook, you know, we're confident we'll do well. There's an event for them in May 7th. Maybe it'll reveal more. But $110 billion. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, listen, uh, before the day is over, we'll hear from Elizabeth Warren. So to put it in perspective, in 2004, Microsoft set the record at $30 billion. We've come a long way. I will say the last two uh, $90 billion announcements from Apple, they did not actually buy that much. They bought like $77 and $84 billion. But the point is, to some degree, folks look at this as, as financial engineering or stock engineering. Uh, and and, and it's, it's, you're going to get some grief because they keep a lot of profits offshore, where they pay 0% interest on it, uh, taxes rather. Uh, they'll raise money in the bond market. They'll pay off that money in a way where they don't have to pay Treasury. So uh, it's, it's good for shareholders in a sense, but I think a better long term uh, for shareholders would be I wanted to see more investment. Think about the money. I think the four other four A top AI players in this quarter have announced like $40 billion worth of a commitment to AI. And that's where it's going to be. Tim Cook is really confident he can do this, but maybe too much of a myopic focus on day to day share price. Yeah. Well, look. Um at this point, uh, they're seeing some serious issues in China, you know, Charles? And I think that when the Chinese Communist Party came out a couple of months ago and said, no more iPhones used in the Chinese government, that was a pivot. That was, that was a turning point, not just for Apple, but for this market, I think. So it's going to have an increasingly, you know, uphill battle in China. You've got Huawei coming at them with their own phones. That's China's tool for surveillance, Charles. And on the buyback, you don't really know if they're ever actually going to buy all that stock back, right? They don't have to. No, like I said, the last two 90 billion buybacks, they did not do 90 what? billion. I think they did 77 and 84. It's still a lot of money. I mean, again, you know, underscoring the issues with China and, and the iPhone and competition, which is why you want to see more of a uh, commitment to CapEx and, and research and development. Uh, uh, you know, this is a, the visionary part of Apple that seems to have faded in recent years. Although the other services stuff is doing well, uh, you know, people want to see a whole lot more. Mm. Uh, you know, I don't know about the relationship in China. I feel like, you know, two weeks ago we were saying, hey, Tesla's in trouble in China. Elon Musk goes over. Next thing you know, they have this major announcement. Tesla stock takes off like a rocket. Tim Cook probably has great relationships over there. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them. But however they do it, skirt around the major issues that would be facing other U.S. companies there. Okay, we'll see. Let's talk. Let's talk rates and economy uh, ahead of the jobs numbers. We've got the jobs numbers coming out in 10 minutes, Charles. Interest rates this morning pulling back fractionally. We've got the 10-year yield right now trading this way at 4.55 percent. Actually, we've seen a pretty good decline uh, while we're on the air. Now the yield is down three basis points, sitting at 4.55 percent. The Journal is writing that inflation and mounting U.S. debt is boosting yields and squeezing Treasuries. Meanwhile, we get the April jobs report out in, uh, as you know, 12 minutes time. Economists expect 243,000 non-farm payrolls added to the economy in the month of April, with the unemployment rate holding steady at 3.8 percent. Charles, how important is this report after the weak spots that we've seen, including inflation elevated for three straight months and uh, growth coming down to 1.6 percent for the first quarter? I, I think Wall Street needs to see a, an uptick yeah. in the unemployment rate. Uh, I think that Jay Powell's made it clear in a couple of these uh, Q&A sessions at the FOMC uh, that, you know, uh, unemployment, that's where that's going to be his trigger to start cutting rates. Uh, because, listen, everyone knows higher for longer is there in terms of inflation. The federal government, by the way, the fiscal uh, amount of money that we're raising it's just mind-boggling. But I do want to go back to that because, Maria, the wild card today is, is government, right? We never know how
not much. We just know it's been mind boggling. But check this out. The ECI report we got employment cost index. Shocking. It came in above estimates. Not the private sector. The private sector is in free fall. That's government. Government was up to 4.8 percent. The second highest in the last decade. It's really, truly mind boggling. The JOLTS report. The JOLTS report yesterday. Job openings are down everywhere except the government up 68,000. So the government is hiring more people. They're paying them outrageous amounts of money. And you say, well, how can state and local governments keep doing this? Don't forget, as, far, as part of the American Care, uh, CARES Act uh, that Biden put through, $817 billion has gone to state and local governments so far. Yeah. Go to pandemic oversight. That's where the money is coming from. So, uh, you know, on one hand, it's, it's a form of manipulation. And look, the job numbers look fantastic, but, mm. it's, un but it's not going to last forever. And, and beneath the surface here, pay attention to the private sector. Pay attention to jobs that really are, are, are that are creating, you know, real economic opportunity, not leisure and hospitality. The, the health care we know is a part of the de demographic thing. Look for real organic growth because that's been lacking. No matter how much they put on the pom-poms, when the number comes out, the bottom line is the private sector is starting to weaken. And, I, and I'm really sad that Powell didn't acknowledge that uh, on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, fun strat. That's Thomas Lee. Thomas Lee this morning is writing this. A soft jobs report likely shifts fear of May to buy in May. And he goes on to say, well, we viewed the Fed's rate decision and press conference as dovish. The street views hardly budge. Uh, the expected number of rate cuts unchanged. Post FOMC, Bank of America still sees one cut. Goldman Sachs sees two cuts. City is still calling for four cuts. <laughs> four cuts from City, Charles. Yeah. Hold that thought. We're going to take a break and then come back. <laughs> You're sticking with us ahead of the jobs number now nine minutes away.